All right, today uh, we're going to talk about Johann Gerhard Onken. Um, he lived January 26, 1800 to January 2nd, 1884. So a good long life, 1800 to 1884. He became known as the father of the Continental Baptists, um, that continent being Europe, and his motto, every Baptist a missionary. Um, by the way, uh, Pastor Armacost teaches Baptist history for our college, and many of his lectures are right there on our YouTube channel, Fairhaven Classes. Mr. Brady will often encourage us to do some additional reading. He'll hold up a book from time to time and tell us we can get it in the bookstore. Um, uh, but in, in, in addition to that, Pastor Armacost, he's got a 23-minute part one video on Onken and a 43-minute part two video on him. Onken was quite the believer. Some called him the Spurgeon of Germany. Spurgeon himself knew him and called him the Apostle Paul of Europe. He uh, reminds us of Adoniram Judson some because he outlived two wives and uh, married a third uh, who was actually a member of Spurgeon's congregation. Now, uh, he never met his dad. Uh, his dad uh, was off working with conspirators to overthrow Napoleon. And uh, he was discovered, fled to England, and then died there. And of course, he, uh, Anken was uh, born and raised in Germany, so he never met his dad. Um, but maybe he inherited something from his dad in the way of, hey, I'm going to do what I believe is right, uh, even if the government officials won't allow me to. Um, he was one of those guys that would stand for what was right. One time, a burgomaster, not a burger master, but a burgomaster, like a, a German mayor, political official, said, Onken, as long as I can lift my little finger, I will put you down from preaching this gospel. And Onken told him, as long as I can see God's hand above your little finger, I will preach the gospel. Um, when he was just a teenager, uh, he left his native Germany for England, uh, where he was, as, uh, where he was. So he's a young Lutheran, uh, and, he's, and he's going to serve an apprenticeship under a Scottish tradesman. Um, and so they did a lot of traveling around, and Onken would go along with him. He wasn't even saved yet, but God was preparing him as, as he would journey and see different parts of that part of the world. The wife of the Scottish tradesman was a Presbyterian, and she gave Onken a precious gift, his first Bible. In one of his travels, he found himself staying with a congregational family. And at family prayer, the father would openly pray that their guest, Johann Onken, would get saved. After a near-death experience, God had his attention in a special way. And he was attending a service with a Methodist preacher, and he received Christ as his Savior. Uh, he actually said not once growing up um, did he hear from his Lutheran pastor one uh, clear presentation of the gospel. Well, now he's saved, and he really got saved. He immediately got busy in the business of souls. He said, from that day I became a witness, albeit a weak one, of God's love to sinners and his all-powerful grace. He got to lead one of his neighbors to the Lord. And this got him so excited. He said, there's nothing better than seeing someone get saved. He said, it was so exciting. He said, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Um, each day as he traveled, he was given a, a little sum of money he could buy lunch with. And, and so every day, lunchtime, here's some money, go get some food. And uh, he would take that uh, small sum of money and instead buy gospel tracts and go out and use his lunch break to, to pass out scripture. Um, this was quite a pathway of denominations, wasn't it? Raised a Lutheran, worked with a Presbyterian, stayed with Congregationalists, and then got saved under the preaching of a Methodist. And, uh, and again, um, we, this uh, every Baptist a missionary, we still have to get there, huh, for his, his motto. Uh, so he's saved, and he wants to jump into German missions. Uh, he was sent out by the British Continental Society, um, and, and, and he was getting involved with Lutheranism, but he found it was just so dead. 
um, rationalism in Germany had taken its toll. He said he knew of only one Lutheran minister who actually believed in the deity of Jesus, which blows you away. If you don't have the deity of Jesus, uh, again, for us, you don't have anything. Um, here, uh, he, he actually united with uh, the English Reformed Church, so another denomination on his way to becoming a Baptist. Um, so he's under Pastor Matthews, um, who gave him a room. He said, here's a large room, and you can use this to start holding some meetings. And so for his first service, he had eight, and one got saved. And uh, things were growing, and things were growing. And after a while, he had to turn away 100 people for lack of room. As his ministry grew, so did the fervor of the government officials who opposed him. When his ministry was disapproved by the German state church, he began a bookstore and resorted to passing out Bibles. He was so in love with the Lord that he believed everyone needed to possess a copy of the scripture. Um, later in life, he became an agent of the Edinburgh Bible Society, and according to their records, not Onkin's, according to their records, he had passed out over two million copies of the scripture. It was when his first child was born and his pastor was urging him to have the infant baptized uh, when he began wondering, where in the Bible does it teach that infants are to be baptized? And so his pastor said, well, I'll, I'll preach on the subject. And, and, and so he did, and he was listening attentively, more attentively than ever before. And, and he, it became very clear to him that the Bible doesn't teach that at all. Upon further study, he realized um, that the Bible taught that baptism was to be uh, an immersion, and it was only to be had by believers. So as, uh, and again, God... Again, you, you pursue the truth, and then God brings people into your path to help you, if you honestly do. Um, in 1829, a, ship, a ship's captain named Tubbs was stuck in Hamburg uh, due to ice, and he was a member of a Baptist church in Philadelphia. The Lord allowed them to meet and began studying the Bible together. It was wonderful, testing everything by Scripture. Now he was fully convinced that he himself needed to be immersed, but he couldn't find anyone in Germany to baptize him. For about five years, he waited and prayed. Uh, one man said, well, you should probably just baptize yourself, and he didn't feel comfortable with that. Another man said, travel to England and have someone baptize you there. Uh, meanwhile, Tubbs had come back to his home church in Philadelphia and told them about this man, Onkin, and, and this group of people he was working with. One of the men heard the story, uh, Pastor Barnas Sears. He had planned a trip to Germany to study there. And while he was there, he looked up Onkin. And they were able to get together. And, and Sears was able to baptize him and six others in the dead of night. It was midnight. Uh, they had to go outside Hamburg on, on a boat. And they found this island in the middle of the Elbe River. And uh, they were baptized <laughs> at midnight out there, these, uh, these seven believers. The next day, these seven were constituted into the first Baptist church of modern time in Germany, and Anken was chosen to be the pastor. When Sears got home, he actually garnered uh, support from the American churches there for what Anken was doing. Within a little more than four years, churches were begun in Berlin, Oldenburg, Stuttgart, uh, the the authorities continually took notice. Uh, they, would, they would imprison him for the, for the first time in 1840. Numerous times after that, he was actually flogged uh, at least one time. But this only did more to stir up the flames of revival. He carried the gospel beyond the borders of Germany as well, into Denmark, Netherlands, Lithuania, Switzerland, Poland, and Russia. And there's quite a bit more to his story. Like I said, Pastor Armacost has a, a part one of 23 minutes, a part two of about 43 minutes. There's a lot to his story. Um, but in 1860, a law was passed granting religious freedom. Here is another Baptist hero in the important cause of religious liberty. On April 17th of 1868, the First Baptist Church of Hamburg uh, dedicated their new building able to seat 1,400 people, and actually in attendance that day were some of the officials who uh, persecuted him. And so that's uh, pretty exciting how God uh, honors when somebody will say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my lunch money. I'm gonna, I'm, if it comes to me, I'm going to ask God, what can I do for you? Not what can I do for myself with all these things. And God honors those things.